This is Mrs. Palmer Quay with a brief introduction to the Advanced Biology course for Excelsior. This course is a little different because it uses learning targets instead of a textbook as the basis for what to study. And so by using this, in this video, I hope to provide you a good overview to get you started. The Advanced Biology course can be thought of a owner's manual perspective on the human body. We're going to talk about both anatomy, the various parts, and physiology, the functions of those various parts. You will have a fair amount of memorization, but perhaps not as much as some of the other courses because I really am wanting to have you feel more comfortable about how your own body works and help you understand the various news reports and magazine articles that you might read on health and um, medical situations. The other thing that's different about this course, as I said, is that it looks for learning targets, not so much as textbooks. I let you use any textbook that fulfills the requirements of being a fairly recent one, or you can only use online resources. I'm not concerned so much with that you have a book in hand, but that you are fulfilling the various learning targets and learning those um, concepts. So because those, the focus is on the target, as I said, multiple resources are encouraged. Not one textbook probably is going to answer all of the learning targets that I have listed. You will have to go outside your textbook at least for some of them. There are also a diversity of assessment options. Assessments are just how I see what you've learned and so you get a chance to pick how you're going to show me what you've learned for most of these units. The weekly class time is when we will spend time doing class activities and group discussion and other sort of general um, checkup and concept building activities. And so you'll be coming to class with a not working knowledge already of the unit and we apply that in a lab activity. So what do you do all week? How do you plan your week then with this sort of I have learning targets to fulfill? Well for each unit there are videos. They um, have can be found under my science channel on YouTube, DPQ Science. And along with each video, there are PDF handouts of the slides that you can use as a place to take notes. So I would suggest that you start with the videos. The videos run from 30 to 45 minutes in length, so they might be longer than you want to watch at any one setting. But you don't have to watch the whole thing at once. You can sit down and watch 10 minutes and then come back to it when you have a little more time. I will be posting you links to these videos each week as they apply, but they are all on the Science Channel. I am doing some updating, so if you go ahead, you may find that I'm going to be posting a revised one after you've already watched it. Don't worry if that should happen because um, the content is going to be essentially the same. I'm asking you to take notes on the learning targets. I don't care what format you use for the notes. It can be a Cornell note system. It can be you know, your own note outline. And so what I would suggest is that you start with whatever basic resource you are using, whether it is a textbook or some online website that you found that you find, think is just going to be really helpful for this course, and take some notes and see how it matches up with the learning targets that are available for that unit. Then if there are places that the notes that you've taken are not answering a question in the unit learning targets, then go and research those particular targets. See if you can find that information. If you have difficulty finding any information, of course, you can always email me and I'll try to point you in a good direction. This year I'm also asking you to communicate with your class members through posts. We'll be using Enmodo.com for online communication. And so I'm asking you to post three original comments each week. They can be things like, I found this great resource when I was looking up whatever learning target, um, or I'm, you know, this is what I have learned, or I find this fascinating. They don't have to be long posts, but they do have to be substantial, so give me more than a sentence. Along with you posting three times, I'd like you to comment twice on your classmates' posts, and this is over the course of a week. And that can be a very that can be a one sentence comment. That can be a very short comment, or it can be slightly longer. But one time, I also want you to expand on something that somebody else has posted. So if they've posted a particular surprising um, realization for something that they have read, then you can expand on that idea, or you can add in information on the topic that they are discussing from your own. This is new this year, so I reserve the right to adjust my requirements for posts as we go along, but I am um, expecting you to do some online communication with each other throughout the week since we only see each other one day. 
There are vocabulary words for each unit, and I use a flashcards app on Edmodo for, to provide both review and then a chance to submit those flashcards as a quiz grade. That become, will become clearer as we actually work through it, but be expected that you'll be doing vocabulary words for each unit. You also each week will be preparing an answer to a critical thinking question. This is a question that tries to apply the concept for whatever unit we're studying in a real life medical situation. Now, we can kind of pretend we're doing grand rounds as medical students. Of course, we're not going to be quite so much in depth as any medical student, but I'd like a well thought out answer explaining the problem and what would be the um, procedure for you know, answering the question or dealing with the health condition. I, the critical thinking questions need to be turned in in two ways. It needs to be turned in in written form directly to me, and then it will be presented to your classmates. So each week, you're going to be presenting on the concepts that we talked about the previous week. So the class in the in-class time will help make sure that you've got a good understanding of this topic, and then you prepare an answer to one of these critical thinking questions to present the next week. So that'll also provide some review as we go through the course, because there is a lot of material to cover when you're talking about the human body. We also have labs each week, and for the each unit you will have an assessment, and so you will have lab reports to write up, and you will have assessments to design if you're doing your own or to complete if you're taking one that I have prepared. So what about these units assessments? What does it mean that you can design your own assessment? Well, assessment is a way to show what you have learned, and I'm giving you a great deal of flexibility to choose how you show me that. You can do the traditional paper test, and we do start out with a paper test for the first four units. So your very first assessment will be a test on units one through four. But the other assessments do not have to be a test unless you want them to be. In fact, you must try four different types of assessments over the course of the year. And there are more than four opportunities for assessments, so you will be able, you can do any one type more than once. You can do two tests and two papers and then one other thing. You can also work in a small group if you'd like to do it as a group project, and since we have a small class today, we could work as a class and count that as the small group. Some of the things that we can, can be used for an, the assessment for a unit is that you can make a video or give a live presentation on a topic, you know, get out a PowerPoint presentation and stand up and tell us about it. You can read a book or watch a documentary video and write a paper. You can be creative and come up with a song or a poem. We had several poems last year that discusses a particular concept. You can try to present a potential solution to some issue that's in the news right now. If you think you've got the way to solve this or the way that scientists should be working on it, go ahead, give me a presentation on that. You can do a personal research project beyond what you're going to be required to do for the science fair. So if you really like doing personal research, you can do one for an assessment as well as the one for your science fair, but everybody will be doing one. You could interview a medical professional. Um, if you were studying the heart, you could interview a cardiologist. If you've got someone, an orthopedic surgeon, when you're studying bones and muscles, if you've got connections, you can use that as your assessment. Or you could create a game for the class. These are all things that we saw happening in the class last year. There are other possibilities. I'm open to any ideas you have. I do provide rubrics, these you know, ideas for how I'm going to grade these various assessments and so you do have a good idea of what needs to be in the assessment in order for me to give you full credit. So that covers what I want to give you as an introduction to this course. Hopefully that will help you get started. You'll be getting a link to the first unit video with the handout soon and so then you can start jumping in and start working on those first learning targets getting ready for our first class.